Now I used to use XBM and I used to use some mod packs and um, Wargaming have added a lot of what I used to install mod packs for into the game, including hit markers that are obvious. Um, we're just going to uh, put a shot into the Thrids Vaga there for uh, 414 damage. Nice penetrating hit with the HE. He's backing away. Oh, he didn't like that. No, he didn't like that at all. Uh, so we're going to speed it up because one of the things that, um, one of the reasons I don't use XBM or mod packs anymore is because, as I say, most of what I use in the game is included uh, now. Don't need to install anything separately, but um, yeah, I'm just wondering, can I loop loop a shell maybe over the ridge at the Slidswagon, but he's backing away and... Um, Alright, oh I, oh, I only need to hit this guy about eight times and maybe I'll kill him, but there's one hit. Oh, Tonza's gone down, and there's another hit, and yeah, okay. Yeah, I definitely need to hit this guy about six more times, but in the meantime, where's that Slidswagon? He's out here somewhere, so um... One of the big things I used mod packs for, there we go, uh, was hit markers. And you can see the hit marker there, I'm lining it up. He fired blind, so he must be in that bush. Looped the shell over the ridge, and there we go. So, um, yeah, the fact that hit markers are so prominent and so accurate now are one of the reasons I don't really use mods anymore. But um, hit markers, use them, and you may may end up getting more damage, more kills, and at least, at least if you don't kill or hit an enemy tank, you know exactly where he is. Hi folks, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the Krupster Waffentrager, a tier 7 German premium TD, the one that isn't the E25, and that's probably its biggest problem. But anyhow, this is an interesting tank regardless, even though only one was ever built, it was a prototype, but um, towards the end of World War II, in April 1944, Krupp got together with Stair, and uh, they got together to discuss the possibility of uh, developing the Rappenschlepper artillery tractor, which was built by Stair, into a vehicle that could also carry an 88 mm or 88 uh, centimeter Pack 43 gun. Uh, in other words, the long 88. Now, this would generate basically a special artillery tractor that was capable of not only transporting the gun or the artillery piece from place to place, but also of firing it from the chassis. And while it could move the gun from place to place without having to remove it, it could fire from the chassis, it could also still function as an artillery tractor um, and uh, basically recover and relocate artillery pieces on the battlefield. So it had its own gun, but it could still be used as an artillery tractor. Um, so basically Krupp would design and build the turret and gun and Stair would uh, build the chassis based on, as I say, the artillery tractor, the Rappenschlepper. Um, the prototype was actually completed in September 1944 and it passed its trials just after September. So, um, you know, there was an order put in for another 19 of them to be built by January 1945. However, with raw materials in short supply, production being focused on other vehicles, vehicles, Germany on the back foot and on, uh, on the retreat, only the prototype was ever completed. So uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, gun and uh, turret by Krupp, uh, chassis by Stair, and therefore we have the Krupp Stair Waffentrager, or the Krupp Stair Weapon Carrier. Um, now in-game, as you would expect from a tank with the long 88, the accuracy and gun handling are good. The turret is fully traversable. You can do a 360 with the turret. The camo rating on the tank is pretty good. And uh, as long as you're not getting into too many tier nine games, I think the penetration is quite Quite good on the gun as well. I mean, it is the long 88, so 203 millimeters of penetration, 240 damage, and uh, the premium ammo to get you up to not an amazing 237, but it's enough to do the job, 240 damage. Uh, so it can handle tier nines from distance, but um, yeah, it's it's the gun is is pretty much just the long 88, so it's not amazing for a tier seven TD. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the penetration is okay as long as you're not getting into too too many tier nine games. Uh, the gun elevation is absolutely Absolutely excellent at 45 degrees, so pretty much you could shoot the moon with this. So uh, tanks getting above you aren't a problem. Um, it also gets a very nice 15 kilometers an hour reverse speed, which means that you can play peekaboo, poke out, take a shot, reverse back into cover. So that's nice. Um, the gun depression is 
uh, let's just say it's erratic. The gun depression on paper is very, very good. You've got about eight degrees of gun depression over the rear and sides of the tank. However, over the front, you do have about eight degrees, but unfortunately, you've got these two large viewports. And if you're moving the gun over these viewports, your gun depression drops to zero or if what feels like zero, it's almost nothing. I don't know technically what it is. So essentially, um, sometimes when you're tracking a moving target and you're moving your turret, which is nice because it means you don't have to move your hull, your camo rating stays intact. Um, the turret crosses these uh, viewports and all of a sudden your gun depression goes from a, an impressive eight degrees to pretty much nothing. So uh, that can be a negative for the tank. And while we're on negatives, I might as well stick with some others. Um, yeah, it's only got 800 hit points, as you can see here, which is on the low side for a tier seven TD. Um, even the Scorpion, the American tier seven, that also gets absolutely no armor, gets 820 hit points. So it gets less hit points than the Scorpion, which is a much, much smaller tank and has armor that's almost, well, is as slightly worse. But this, this tank is absolutely no armor. The armor is terrible. It only gets 20 millimeters to the front, 10 on the sides and eight on the rear. So this is a tank that can be derped by tanks firing HE and pretty much anything that shoots it will pen it. Not only does anything shooting it pen it, but unfortunately, because it's a the engine is mounted in the front of the tank, it means that shots to the front of the tank constantly, constantly take out your engine. Um, so that's another another big negative. Um, the top speed is poor at 35 kilometers an hour, and that's after its buffs. Um, you know, and the power to weight ratio is okay at about 15 uh, 15 horsepower to ton ratio. So it can accelerate up to its top speed, but the top speed isn't very good. Um, and that's after after it got buffed. This tank was so much worse when it was originally introduced into the game. Um, the view range is also not good. Uh, it's below average at about 360 meters. So quite a lot of the time, you're not going to be spotting your own targets if you're playing aggressively, or you know, you're going to have to have binox on this tank. I don't think coded optics are going to cut it. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, it, it's got a lot of negatives. Um, but as I mentioned, probably the biggest negative for this tank is the fact that it isn't an E25. So that tank has got special matchmaking, whereas this one doesn't. That tank is so much better tier for tier um, and this is just it's slow it's unmaneuverable and um, yeah it's got absolutely no armor and a gun that is okay but you know can lack against higher tier tanks so um, yeah about the only thing this tank has going for it is its camo rating and you know the camo rating is good but it's not as good as the E25 so even the E25 has beaten when it comes to camo rating so um, yeah it's, it's not a particularly good tank and I would say Say that if you're thinking about getting one, only think about getting one if the E25 is not available or if you're a tank collector, because otherwise I think there are far, far better options at tier seven for TDs if you're looking for a premium TD. Uh, anyhow, uh, this is my first ace in the tank. I hop into this occasionally to play its double and to try and ace it. We finally managed it here on um, the Paris map, uh, which isn't amazing. Now, what normally would happen for TDs on Paris is you would probably head down to the AB sea area, those lines and sit in bushes and snipe. And that's something that this tank is very, very good at because of its camo rating, which is probably its only real positive. Um, you could sit back, you've got a decent gun that's good for sniping, good accuracy, good aim time. Um, so yeah, it's a good sniper, but you know, no, uh, no armor, lack of man maneuverability means that, you know, you have to play it more passively, but I don't like playing TDs passively. So uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be going down the ABC area on this map. Um, I'm going to be playing it a little bit more aggressively. So you can see the acceleration is okay. You can reach your top speed. We're getting there almost 35 kilometers an hour. Um, and the view range is not very good. As I say, the side armor, you've only got 15 millimeters of side armor. So even side Side scraping is a problem in this tank, but uh, you know, sometimes, occasionally your tracks can eat a shot. So I'm just moving out. You can see I've got Binox and a camo net, which I think are two must, must have pieces of equipment for this tank. And we're just setting up here, gonna let my Binox kick in, see what we can spot. And hopefully someone is going to drive down this road. So um, not exposing much of my tank, but um, you know, you can see the turret traverse is actually quite good on the tank for a TD with a turret. And there we go, there's the first victim, so we can get a nice shot in uh, to the easy 8 He gets, starts getting shots, I start getting some assistance damage. So he's backed away and we're still set up here. Gonna wait to see if we can pick anything else up. No one else seems to be advancing. So I decide I'm gonna cross the road and go down to the other side, maybe push up to this corner. 
and see if we can get a little bit closer to the enemy tanks. Now, what you can see me doing is because this tank has got the engine in front, I'm reversing into position because this 15 kilometers an hour is actually quite nice. Um, so we're reversing into position simply just so that we don't expose as much of our tank or as little of our tank as possible. And, oh, hang on, there we go. Aim time is enough to pick up the AC-46, a shot into him, but yeah, I, I'm not sure if I want to poke here. I'm, I'm playing around, I'm hoping maybe he'll go for a shot. And he's gone stealth again, so I don't really want to try and spot him. I'm going to try and do some reverse side scraping, and there we go. That's the easy eight, putting a couple of shots into me, and as I say, even trying to side scrape, trying to angle in this tank is impossible, because everything, everything overmatches your armor. Now, it's been a while since I've played this tank. As I say, occasionally I play it for its daily double, uh, but I've got other tanks to play, so I've decided I'm going to move. I'm going to get out of there. Sitting in the middle of the street here to see if I can spot anything. Um, there's the Churchill 7. And I don't get spotted. And as I say, the camo rating on this tank is quite good. So I am exposed, but I'm not spotted. Oh, AC is more important. The Churchill's in the open, so I can kill the AC. Still have shots on the Churchill before he, can get to, before he gets into cover. And you can see the aim time, the accuracy, they're all there. So yeah, I moved into cover because I knew that was going to get me spotted. So um, once again, just going to try and poke, take a shot, and look at the 15 degrees, or 15 uh, kilometers an hour reverse speed. It means you can play peekaboo, you can poke out, take a shot, reverse out, drive back into cover relatively easy. Snapshotting, not amazing in this tank, and you can see firing before being fully aimed, even though the aim time is quite good. Firing before fully aimed, not a good idea. And even though I was in the open, he couldn't spot me, and um, yeah, just too slow to pick up the kill, but okay, Revelerise, and oh wow. Okay, just took a hit from a Type 58 there. Okay, lots of tanks advancing, gonna poke again. And there's a snapshot. No, no. Okay. All right. There's my gun taken out and I've just lost all my health. I was being too aggressive and that's the problem with this tank. You can't really play it aggressively and I like to play my TDs aggressively and yes, it hurts me. But um, yeah. Okay. The Dicker Max is down here somewhere. And once again, I'm trying to abuse my camo rating. So Dicker Max is down. Oh, I get spotted again. That's kind of really surprising. The Dicker Max. Um, all right. He must have a very good crew. He must be using Binox. So uh, I do get spotted, I'm a one-hit kill, and um, alright, should have dropped off radar, let's poke back up, see if any other tanks are going to be spotted here. We've got medium tanks moving up through the middle, so hopefully they're going to be able to spot the dicker. They do, the dicker goes down, and now it's uh, safe maybe to advance, try and get some more shots. So, oh, Revelerise, looks as if he's going to poke. Ah, uh, he takes out the SU-100Y, but he pokes. We take him out for uh, kill number two. Uh, but I'm still a one-hit kill, and now the uh, tanks up to the north are starting to collapse, so let's see if we can do some work here. So there's a hull-down T-29 with Rex in front of him. Ah, oh, this is annoying. But the Owa Oni is advancing, so let's try and track him. And never mind. Okay, that was a track shot that actually didn't go where I aimed, and we ended up killing the Oni. That wasn't uh, intentional, but you can see the accuracy here. Don't have much to shoot at. Going for the hull, managed to sneak one into the T-29. He didn't have much of his hull exposed, but we got one shot in, and, um, okay, uh, right, he's hulled down now. So, uh, we're up to almost 3k damage, we're up to 3 kills, and, um, yeah, maybe not the best game, lost all my health, made it maybe expose too much of my tank, sort of forgot how bad the armor was on this, but, um, you know, <laughs> we're still in the game, still doing damage, so I can't complain that much. Oh, forgot to change this. Uh, I beg your pardon. Constantly, constantly forget to change it to tanks from names. I don't know why the game just doesn't leave it as the last option you selected, why it has to revert back to the names all the time. But um, anyway, yeah, as you can see, we're winning okay. It's 10-8. Uh, Go for a shot on, well, speculative shot. Probably wouldn't have done anything, but um, yeah, our team are doing okay. We're moving up and uh, happy with the damage. Not quite so happy with the assistance damage, only done 574, but or 47, so... But we're moving up to see if we can get anything else out of this game, and unfortunately the IS takes out the T-29, so there goes that one. So still, still a couple of tanks up here. I'm going to probably relocate because I don't have, um... Don't have a lot of hit points, but tanks in the middle. Can we get anything on this WZ? Is he going to advance? 
So we're just going to move up and um, he's dealing with the Black Prince and he should be able to circle the Black Prince to death. So yeah, there we go. So uh, Black Prince has got him down to 349 health. So we're aiming, 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 aiming. And uh, it was a stupid shot by me. So I'm not sure if that got me spotted waiting for success. Nope, didn't get me spotted. So 132 is advancing. He's a dangerous tank and um, yeah, things aren't looking as comfortable. So WZ is advancing. Okay, 120 is on the other side of the building. So we're going to set up an ambush here for the WZ-120 as he crosses, trying to get as much of my tank into cover as possible. So he's going to cross, we're going to get a shot in. And that's an old man reaction shot. What a terrible, terrible shot by me. Uh, really, really bad shot by me. Old man reaction shot. But thankfully, the VK goes down. The WZ is causing problems for the IS. Got to help the IS, but there's a WZ-120 on the north. So gonna try and stay safe, kill the WZ. Okay, there's the 120, we're in cover. And he gets shot, so, um, all right, he gets taken out. So uh, four kills, we're up to 3,000 damage, and um, that's, game. that's it, game over. So not an amazing game, mistakes were made. I forgot how bad the armor is on this tank because that's another one of these tanks I kind of forget to play. I take it out every so often when I see it and I remember I need to play it. But um, thankfully we did end up finally, finally acing it. And uh, now it goes into my review folder because this is now a tank I have to review. But we picked up the ace, we picked up high caliber. Um, it's a tank that honestly, I don't enjoy playing that much because it forces you to play such a passive role. And that means you're very, very team dependent. and Yes, even playing passively, I've had good games playing passively uh, with a lot of damage, but because I was playing passively, I got low XP because I was sharing my XP and credits with other people. So um, yeah, I, I just don't like this tank. It's a little bit too situational. It's a little bit too team dependent and it's not the E25. But um, anyway, it's done. It's dusted. It's out of the way. We finished top on XP with 1217 was enough to ace it, which isn't doesn't seem that high. Would have thought maybe it was a higher. Maybe there are not a lot of people playing this tank because as I said, it's not an E25, but um, we did 3,000 damage. Four kills was enough for the ace. 21 shots fired. We managed to hit 15, pen 14. So if you're not fighting a lot of tier nines, the penetration is okay. Um, accuracy let me down on a couple of shots, but that was me. That wasn't the gun. It was me firing badly, um, but happy with the damage. And as you can see, most of the damage was actually done from a distance of less than 200 meters. So this tank excels at doing damage from outside the view range over 300 meters. Um, you you know that's probably where it's best but as I say I don't play I don't play most of my TDs that way uh, but anyway we spotted four damaged eight destroyed four did uh, 547 assistance damage which is a little bit disappointing considering I've got the tank camoed up with binox and everything else um, and it's a decent money maker so even though we fired 21 shots um, ammo resupply for some reason was only 5,000 I need to check that because um, ammo can't be that cheap can it Maybe it is. Maybe it's a good moneymaker. Uh, maybe that's another positive for the tank. It's going to be a while before I review it, but um, 83,000 credits in the tier 7 premium. Not bad. Um, not terrible. And um, wasn't my first game of the day. As I say, I take it out to play it when uh, I remember to play it and um, played it actually earlier today. So I decided it's been ages since I've hopped into the Stair Waffentrager. I'm going to sit in it in a few games and uh, see if we can ace it. And we managed to. So uh, there we go. A video fresh, fresh off the uh, server for you. Um, as I say, done earlier today. But uh, anyhow, I think it's okay if you're into TDs, but it's not okay if you already have an E25 or if the E25 is for sale, get that because it's a far, far more flexible and fun tank. This one, it's a one trick pony. It's a passive sniper. And as a result, I don't find it a lot of fun to play. But uh, anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.